We're still going the partnership route. Right. What we're doing is extending a lot of the capabilities that we've already put into place. This is a really unique time in the industry right now, where what we've noticed is that the auto industry and the tech industry are more open than ever about collaboration. Right. People are realizing that self-driving is the future, but it's expensive. It's really hard to do. And we've been able now to amass a significant amount of talent, number one, right. which is really critical. And two, we also know what to do with our data. We have about a million rides a day. We've hit this scale level, and that data can use to tune algorithms faster. So we figured rather than sitting on the sidelines, let's get in there, create this technology, and it's an opportunity to bring it back to our partners. Right. We're actually looking to create an open environment with the industry to move this forward. Long term, though, the one thing that I've always thought, and this is true of Uber and you, is that this is going to put you at odds with your employees, well, they're not your employees, but your drivers. That when this, if, if in fact all of this works the way it's supposed to, the argument that this is creating employment all around the country, all around the world, is you, you're effectively going to put them out of business with driverless cars. Whereas I, I thought potentially Lyft could have taken another tact on this whole situation and said, you know what, uh, there will be teams of people that would like, the kind of people who would like own uh, trucks that are driverless, but they would own them. And so you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Rather than you own them or partner. So first of all, we will always need drivers. Okay. We are at 0.4 of 1% of passenger miles driven in the United States on ride sharing. St statistics and studies show that with AV and with EV, we're going to go to 80 to 95%. So the number of drivers that we need just to satisfy our demand as this technology rolls out, and the rollout's going to be slow right. because it takes a lot of time to make sure it works in all the conditions that are there, there's going to be more and more drivers coming on board for the foreseeable future, number one. And two, there are new opportunities that are going to be created for drivers. We're seeing a surge in demand for healthcare, elderly-related assistance services that are there right. that require drivers. And you'll see whole new ways of transporting. You'll have cafe services right. uh, in cars as well. But do you think you're going to own the cars? I think that there's going, to be an, uh, there's going to be a variety of ways to do that. There's going to be a leasing option that's there. It's about bringing partners on that own the cars as well. This, that's right. why we have these partnerships. It's going to be a hybrid network. There's going to be drivers. There's going to be third-party cars. There's going to be lift vehicles as well. Realistically, what? right behind me, I'm seeing cabs go down the street. When, when will those be autonomous? New York City, right here. Well, so, you know, we announced that in a couple months, we're going to be rolling out the first autonomous vehicles in Boston mm -hmm. with, our, with one of our partners, Newtonomy. So that process has already started to happen. As to when we can handle, this is a pretty challenging environment. You look outside, it's raining, mm -hmm. and the streets are pretty busy in New York. It will be some time, it'll be some years before the algorithms are trained and everyone's confident that it can do that. How will your economics, though, change? I mean, you're saying that you will still need drivers, you might even own cars, so you might go from this asset light model to this right. asset heavier model. It seems like, I mean, why invest in this technology if you're still going to require drivers there unless you're going to pay them less in some way? Uh, and why would you own the vehicles? Yeah, I don't think drivers are going to be paid less in any case. Uh, so what's well, the advantage to having driverless technology if you're still going to have drivers? So there's a couple of reasons that driverless technology makes sense. Number one, it is safer. Number two, it does cost less in the long run. As the cost of the technology in the car goes down, it will result in a lower cost for the consumer and enable that shift that we see to transportation as a service. Right. But when you think about the transportation as a service, what I'm trying to understand, is, and is your strategy, do you think your strategy is ultimately different than Uber's in terms of what they're doing? I mean, they're not partnering with anybody yet, but you weren't, part you were you weren't going down this road either. Do you think that both of you will ultimately be hybrids? I can't comment on uh, where Uber's going with right. their strategy, but we believe that the only way to move this forward is to work very closely with partners, as well as taking a deeper uh, look into creating those technologies and then sharing it out there too. But you could see a day where you own a huge fleet of vehicles. I don't think ownership is necessarily going to be you know, the way we've looked at it in the past. There could be all sorts of leasing. It could be bringing in third-party financiers into the equation as well because they see an asset that can generate cash flows. What's to stop Tesla from just turning on the switch and saying, you know what, we are perhaps in the lead in terms of driverless or autonomous technology because they have probably have the most miles driven uh, under these conditions. And they could just say, you know what, we're going to start this service because that's always been part of the bull case for the Tesla bulls, that they are sort of they could be that transportation network of the future, not just an automobile manufacturer. So there are a couple things there. First of all, um, we respect Tesla's capabilities and what they can do with their sensors. We think today to roll out um, a fully self-driving vehicle requires a multitude of sensors. Could be things like LIDAR, which is a, a laser-based radar, 
vision as well, which is what the Tesla vehicles have, and radar. So you do need a full complement today with today's technology, number one. Number two is that today and the foreseeable future, what the consumer cares about the most is having a reliable experience in addition to safety. And that means that when I open up the app, I know that there's a car there in a couple minutes. Right. That kind of ubiquity, you need to have human drivers. We have over 700,000 drivers now. That's something that any other company would have to replicate instantly to do that. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.